Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Amaral. And welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, episode 20. Today, we're going to be talking all about tech coach websites and discussing how you guys can create the perfect website for your professional development portal. Nick, how are you today? I'm doing good, Jeff. Just been working with uh, an iPad initiative, uh, trying to get some of our teachers mobile in the classroom recently. So that's our newest uh, newest goal right now. So designing some PD and running some workshops on that. You know, I love that getting teachers mobile, realizing that the w- classroom has no walls, getting teachers to teach, maybe not from the front of the classroom, but from the back of the classroom. And it is so important when we do that to make sure that the teacher knows that it's okay to try new things. And, and really that's kind of ties into what we were talking about last week on our episode about reflections. What did you kind of what, what kind of feedback did you get last week, Nick, about our episode nineteen, creating a one to one relationship with your teachers? Uh, you know, I think that a lot of people liked it. Uh, the idea of kind of being open and honest, uh, you know, with teachers and, and with them as far as what works and what doesn't. They like the idea of I think we talked about a few times, just taking it slow, building relationships, and how that foundation, the relationship foundation with staff it plays a, a vital role into how the rest of the year and the pd and the workshops is going to go now I, I i agree I, before we always get into business with teachers it's always hey how you doing how's school how's the family what's going on it is so important to create those one-to-one relationships and you know nick because the show is called ask the tech coach we had quite a few tech coaches this week right into us um Let's kind of throw a couple questions up here. I think the most important one and the one that I struggle the most with, is it possible to make everyone happy? (laughs) No, and this is a tough one, right? Because I think we try to do that, right? I think that's just something that we innately are trying to do. That's our role, right? Work with so many teachers. We want to make them happy, but it just doesn't happen. And, you know, I've been in there. I've run workshops where, you know, some people (laughs) – you know, are just not into the topic or whatever it is, or, or they just are trying to knock out hours. So, you know, it's just, we're trying to, we try to hit the majority. And I think that's the best that we can do. And you're not going to win every single battle, but as long as you can get some people excited um, and interested to come back, then then that's a win. And I what think are your it, thoughts, Jeff? I mean, I think it all depends on, on where you are, right? Like we, we've, we've said this many right. times. I've got six buildings, you've got two buildings. If you're not a native in that building and then you walk in once a semester, once a month and you do that PD session or you're working with really, they're your teachers, but they're strangers to you, right? You don't know what happens when you leave, right? They might go to the principal and talk about you or say something and you're like, my goodness, I thought that actually went really well. You don't know that they were at a higher level or a lower level or somebody was intimidated until maybe you get that phone call and you're like, yeah, you got to change a couple things. Has that ever happened to you, Nick, where somebody might have been not too enthused with what you were doing and suddenly you were the jerk of the world? Yeah, you know, I think it's just it's it's when they're the information that they've received, right, isn't completely accurate or true to maybe what has happened. And I think that happens sometimes where, you know, oh, we, I tried to contact Nick and he never responded to my phone call. But what's the backstory to that? Is Nick busy, you know, r- running around from classroom to classroom or is he busy running a workshop or his, you know, or his afternoon's book that maybe I just couldn't book something that day, you know? Did the teacher run out, reach out to me last minute? How many times, you know, does that happen for a tech coach where you're like, oh man, as much as I'd love to do it, I just, last minute, I'm already booked. So, you know, I, I think it's just that. It's just a matter of the information and, and how it was perceived. And then we had another question here, which kind of ties in, which, which I love how, you know, we're getting multiple questions from different angles, but they all kind of with that same, how do I do the gig, right? And so the last question here is, <laughs> right. how do we recover if something happens, we might not be aware of, you know, maybe I'm working with you one to one and I don't realize I hit a button or I don't realize that maybe I went too fast and yep. you're not comfortable telling me, oh, whoa, 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 let's back up a little bit. Or again, maybe you walk into a faculty meeting and you go, uh, what's the right term here? Nick? You know, you go all ed camp on them and you're not picking up the vibe that they're stone faced and they're not following you until you leave. And then you realize, Oh, we just spent 45 minutes and I was so on the wrong planet. Yeah. 
You know what? One other thing I think that I've I've liked to take advantage of is is sort of kind of going back to just the classroom application, that teachable moment. And I think that's a pretty important thing to kind of just keep an eye out for. You have to kind of have that innately where you can just pick up on it. And like you said, you know, if I'm running and, and we had a goal and our goal was to walk out designing a digital playlist using Google Sites, right? But then I get in and the teacher doesn't have any background comfort in Google sites or in digital playlists. Maybe then we take a step back and I have to, I have to do that as a coach. I have to think, okay, let's get back to the basics for a second. Why don't we actually spend this time getting comfortable with Google sites or why don't we learn the pedagogy behind digital playlists? And then maybe that can open the door for next time. What, what about you? What are your thoughts about that? And, and, and that's hard. Like I've had that situation where you you're adjusting on the fly. Sure. And maybe you, you know, put on the brakes a little bit and you go from, you know, 50 miles an hour to like 15. But then afterwards, maybe you get that conversation and they go, yeah, but you didn't complete the objective I wanted you to complete. The reason I brought you here for this meeting, sure. you didn't go. And I, I've been in situation. you're sitting there going, well, wait a minute. I went at the speed of the clientele in front of me. I right. couldn't get that much farther because A, you know, I they wanted to know how to insert an image. I was trying to get them to the next level, but they were all like, dude, hold on. Right. Yep. And it's, it's hard. It really, really is hard. And the reason why we're bringing up these kinds of topics is because maybe you're out there shaking your head going, yep, I've been in that spot. Maybe you're out there going, you know, if only there was a place for me to learn how to do this better. And you know what, Nick, here we are. It's October the 8th and we're only two days away from launching our Tech Coach Mastermind. You know, we've had such a great response. We are almost at, uh, what are we at here? Almost, you know, eight or nine or so tech coaches that have signed up for Absolutely. this thing. Yep. We are so excited to work with, with all of our tech coaches out there. Um, if you have signed up and you're listening to this, you know, the email's went out you guys all have access to the website you can check out the free lesson plans the, the lms course is going to be coming up soon there's a lot of great stuff that's happening but nick if we want to find out how to learn more information about that mastermind it's still not too late to sign up what's the website that we have to go to to sign up today so they can reach us at teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind i you know and, and look we've been getting a lot of great feedback about that and and you know i promise you guys this is the last show that we're going to mention it but really nick what are we going to get here we're doing an eight-week mastermind and a mastermind is really a professional learning community but we're putting together a select group of tech coaches we're going to do two face-to-face -face meetings each month we're going to be offering digital literacy uh, conversations we're going to help you guys create a tech integration plan for your your school district we're going to give you a five week online course on learning management systems it's 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 to die for it's awesome but also we're going to be doing bonus podcasts you know after each show um or i should say after each meeting i guess when we get together um nick and i are going to be taking all the ideas and putting our heads together and doing bonus podcasts for the group and creating bonus blog posts all around the topics that are meaningful for the group. And, you know, we've been putting up here, we've got probably, you know, eight or nine, maybe half a dozen or so digital lesson plans. And we're going to be adding more digital lesson plans, digital cheat sheets, things that you can take back to your students and teachers and use right away. And the thing I'm excited about, you know, Nick, even sitting here, the, the people who are already in the mastermind have already started signing up for our exclusive membership in our tech coach facebook group i'm looking forward to this teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind check it out it is still time to do it you know basically you can do it up until the night of october the 9th so if you're hearing this on monday or tuesday go to teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind we would love to have you and if you use the promo code tc50 We'll give you $50 off your registration. So check that out today at teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind. Now, Nick, it is time for our tip of the week. What is our tip of the week today? So since we're kind of focusing and talking about uh, websites, you know, one of the things I've just learned from designing websites is to make them organic. So my tip really just speaks volumes to the idea of integrating your school and your district into it. And that the more organic, the more it's built around the customs and the ideals of your school and your district. Um, it just becomes a place that teachers like to kind of go to more often. And and this is a topic, Nick, that we started, I think it was back in episode 11 or 12 yeah, or something like that. Yeah, we got a lot of feedback from this. They asked 
the tech coach, right? <laughs> and so that's why we wanted to do an entire episode on this. Um, Nick, I want to give you a little tech coach website quiz. Are you, are you up for a challenge right now? All right, let's do it. Yep. When you build your website, who is that website for? So for me, um, I'm, you know, I'm designing it for a bunch of people. I think it's got to be accessible to uh, the teachers themselves. Um, but then you have different groups of teachers, right? You have the advanced or basic level. So I have to be able to hit to both, uh, both segments, uh, sections of, of the teachers. I also want my admin to be able to look at it and see that that's connecting to district goals or building initiatives and things like that. Um, so there's a lot, there's a variety of clientele. I even work and do PD with, uh, you know, secretaries and administrative assistants. So that's another piece that I try to, to integrate in there. Uh, with my website design or learning management system and things like that that I integrate. And and that is the right answer, right? It's about everybody. Everyone, yeah. Right? Some people say that, the, 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 you know, like my tech coach website is for me. My right. staff portal is for my staff. And I have an internal website that just I have access to and that I use. It's got my dashboards. It's got a whole bunch of charts. It's it's like it's my, my table of contents into my Google Drive. Um, but we also have our our external tech coach website, which, as you know, as Nick said, has our PD on it. It has our standards. It has links to everything that we need. It has all of these different things in here. And and really today, it just comes down to why are we doing this? Why do we put our, our hearts into making this? And really, the next question here is how do we use it? I know for myself, Nick, I use my staff website, our staff portal, as a as a model Right when I do my PD, all of the PD sessions are on the staff portal, and I teach exactly the way that I'm hoping to see our teachers teach when we go and visit them in the classrooms. I set up my stuff in a playlist. I put all the stuff in there, so that way, as I'm teaching, you know, sometimes I always I step aside and say to the teachers, "Okay, I'm going to break the fourth wall for a second. Let's take a look at how I design this." And then right. we step back into the lesson. So that way they're not only seeing it from a teacher's point of view, but they're see, seeing it from a, uh, you know, a, a student and teacher point of view, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. And I think that's a good idea. I, you know, one of the things that, that sounds just like for me is, you know, when you're putting it together is using it as an opportunity to teach and model some of the things that you want them to work on. Um, you know, we have a big thing right now that we've been discussing, especially my curriculum director and I, as far as, you know, how is what we're doing changing how the teaching is happening in the classroom? You know, we can talk about blended learning and flipped, but if we're still kind of teaching in a in the same kind of rote way of learning that they think you know students are going about in the classroom, then then we got to change the game. So how are we really changing it? So I love that. You know, when I have my PD using my learning management system, I gamified it. Well, gamifying it really has sparked on so much discussion because teachers come to me, how did you set up these self-paced modules? How do you open up these different paths? All of that is just modeling gamification and the things they can do. Um, and now it's a talking and a sticking point and something we can work on in the future. So who has access to your website? Here's the question, right? Is this something... Let me go backwards for a second. Your sure. PD site, your tech code site, is that just the Nick site or is that part of a district level um, website portal? So mine's a little tricky, you know, because we're heavily involved with the learning management system. I run pretty much everything through that. So. Okay. Um, you know, through my learning management site, I have links to where teachers can click on something that says book me here. They can click on an image of, you know, my learning plan to be able to track their hours. So I wanted everything to be integrated. However, I do utilize WordPress for a site because I like to have my tech tips and blog posts and uh, teacher created training videos and whatever, because I, I try to make it as organic as possible. I want them to include things and share it out with with other teachers and the district so that i do run through wordpress which they can get through my learning management system again i want it to all kind of be in one spot um but i am the only person who posts content so i'm the person putting it up or you know sharing the link or whatever they just share me the things they want me to put up there so i asked this question nick because for many tech coaches they have their dedicated site and sure. for many tech coaches they are part of the district site which means there's other opportunities for cooks in the kitchen right right 
And, and, and every situation's a little bit different here. And obviously, if you're building your tech coach site, you can kind of design it however you need to. Whereas if you're designing it with a, with a district in mind, you got to think district. You can't necessarily be uh, cutesy. For, for lack right. of a term here, you have to be more professional looking where, you know, I've seen a lot of fantastic tech coaches, but they're all more lovey dovey tech rather than this is the staff portal. Sure. Right? So yes. a, a lot of here is, you know, we talk about who the website is for, right? We talk and say that it's for coaches, right? So when I say a website is for coaches, I'm looking at. I use this website for myself when I sit down with with my teacher and we we go over their lesson plan and they might say like where do you have other examples? Personally, I have a site, I have a page on the site that has examples from other teachers, so I go to the archives page and I can <laughs> just pick and choose like I'm, you know, grocery shopping. As opposed right. to, you know, maybe if I was to go pick and hunt through my Google Drive, I, I'd be spending four or five or six or eight minutes per teacher just hunting for stuff. So I use my website as a coach to be able to find things quickly for teachers, find examples, find templates, find everything. Um, do you use your site, Nick, as as your own public um, grab bag or do you just think of it as it's the teacher site that I'm, I'm the admin for? No, I use it for myself as well. You know, there are a lot of times where, you know, I get an email in from a teacher about how to do something. And, and, and I use it as a go back to like, oh, man, I remember, you know, posting a tech tip or I remember having some spot where I have a how to guide on how to do something. And then I go to it and I have it and I find it and then I share it back out with the teacher or I need it to kind of spark and jog my memory about something maybe we had a discussion about. So absolutely, I use it as a grab bag of tricks kind of to go back to, to pull, you know, oh, here's a tech tip or here's a tool we talked about and here's some different things. So, you know, you touched on the idea which, which really kind of stems the whole, I think, opening of the website, which is know your audience. Yes. Right? Like we, we, you talk to students about writing you know, an essay or a speech and they got to know who they're gearing it toward. You know, if you're gearing this toward parents and you're designing, like, this is a question I have for you. Do you include parents? Because that's something that's come up down our line is Nick, should you include parents or a place for parents to learn through your tech coach? And I almost kind of feel that that's a separate piece. Yes. Um, right. So you feel the same way with that? Um, I believe that you need to have a family site. This is what, this is the safe spot where you're going to put your, school things if we want to make a parent portal and i highly suggest having a place where parents learn how to do things right, right. Yep. um and, and what is that web that, that that that's how to use your learning management system that's how to log in for these the parent access that's that's the how to do things that's not your teacher facing um PD sites, staff sites, you know, the place right. where all the links are to get to all, all your, your district wide important things. Right. Um, when I'm looking at using a site for a coach, I have spots on my website that are private, meaning only I can use them. And mm -hmm. I have spots on the site that are public, meaning only my, you know, I want my teachers to use them. And, and I use, you know, I, like we use Google slide sites and you can hide pages from navigation, but I still have pages in there that I can access because maybe they have, you know, resources or things that I need. So I bookmark those hidden pages. I know where they are. I can get to them, but the staff doesn't necessarily need to know that there's all these things hidden in there. And I, I think that's an, it's an interesting idea that even teachers can use on their own teacher pages or on their own lesson portals. Sure. Um, one of the things that I always teach is, you know, like when I when I make up my PD page for a specific class, I will somewhere at the bottom have a row on a Google site that says teacher resources and I'll put a link. You know, here's my presentation editing link. Here's my right. Google sites editing link. Now, these are things that if the students or I should say my teachers click on them, they get the error message that says, you know, page doesn't exist. You don't have pro. And that's OK. I put that stuff there so I can quickly access it when I'm working on that or when I'm updating something. So there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to make your coaching site for you and your students. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at making it for our district, though, Nick, that's a completely different conversation, right? As a Absolutely. district level, you know, you're, you're now now you're just a part of the district 
plan. Yeah, and I, and I think that kind of goes back to, you know, what we kind of just started with, and, and that was my question is, you know, if we're going to, knowing your audience, if you're going to make it for parents, does the parent piece need to be tied in? If it's going to be at a, an administrative level, now we're going to talk about maybe big, you know, umbrella ideas and where maybe things we're doing fits under. Is that data needed? Are those analytics or those things needed where the teachers need to be able to access them? I think too much is going to clutter it up. So you know, gear it toward the specific audience that you want. You know, we can kind of link coaches in maybe with teachers, but like you said, the idea and the trick of hiding certain pages is great. And that's even great for the teacher. You know, if you want to keep your project, maybe the teacher's using Google sites for a project. Um, and then they have these hidden pages where it's the analytics and the student data side, you know, they can keep it all lumped into one area that way it's easily accessible, but then they're, you know, I just want to see the results and then they can go to that hidden tab and see, the feedback of the information. So it's a great trick. But district sites, I think that's a whole nother game. Absolutely. And we want to know what you guys are up to, right? Like, you know, as we're going through here and we're talking about these things, maybe you guys have some comments. We can mention them, of course, next week on our show on episode 21 that's happening next week. But we want to know, like, reach out to us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Or, of course, you can always leave us a voicemail over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Or, of course, email us over at feedback at teachercast.net. Now, Nick, we know why we have a website. We know what the purpose is. We know who we're creating it for. What goes in a website? What, what's what's one thing that you need to have as a tech coach on your website? All right. So my number one has to be the appointment calendar. I need, you know, it's it's that back and forth of email. I don't want to kind of get caught up in that. So I want to make it simple. I want them to just have an accessible calendar. Book me when you need me. Get you know, the reminder gets sent to me and then I'm able to just, you know, see it on my phone the morning of and jump in the rooms when I need to be there. Now, that that also brings up something that I I, I, I think, Nick, we need to do a whole show on this training your staff members. Right. Because most staff members will email you for things. Sure. And that, that that's, of course, an acceptable way. But you don't want to respond to an email and say, hey, Nick, thanks for emailing me. But could you go fill out this thing over here? <laughs> Right. And, and that's so funny, Jeff, just because so many people do that. And then the idea of like, you want to say, you, you want them to ultimately, you're like, man, I wish they would just use the appointment calendar. But that couldn't be more than one of the worst things to do is to then send them that email that says, hey, click this link and book it this way. Anyway, it's like, now you just took extra time to spend when you could have just docked it in your own calendar or just remembered it, you know, sort of deal. But, you know, I totally get how that can get lost in email. And we're trying to kind of get rid of that, that, that niche of losing work that way. Right. You're just, you're just happy that they care enough to find you. Right. Right. Exactly. They, so they deem your services email. useful somehow. <laughs> right. Um, appointment calendar. You, you had mentioned a few, I, I, I use Google forms so that way I can then, you know, at least track it. I can then go back and forth with email. I, I've yeah. tried a few of the other, you know, well, first of all, what do you use? Yeah, so I, I, I like uh, Google Calendar using the appointment slots, but I've used, you know, you can, bo uh, you can book me. I know we've talked about a point lead before. Mm -hmm. um, and all good. You know, my, my one thing with any of them has been just the idea of, you know, and I'm not using a premium version. So obviously, if I did that, that would be a whole nother benefit. My thing is just custom time slots and not right, being able right. to, to monitor, you know, haul time and things like that. And, and my big thing my for big not thing doing for that. that is the fact that when you're running between all the buildings and, you know, like I, I don't have a, I don't have a day where, you know, Tuesday I'm at the middle school, Wednesday I'm at the elementary school. Right. I, I could be many places on the same exact day. Uh, I, I don't want somebody trying to book a time with me and they don't realize that, you know, 15 minutes earlier, I'm in a different time zone. And, and, you know, you know, you don't know where those things are because you're just looking at a calendar that says free or busy. And yep. I find that that, you know, again, going back to last week, Nick, creating those great opportunities for one to one. You never want to have somebody finally book you and then you write back and go. Uh, yeah, I'm not even in that building that day. Can you not do that? Or you go back and say, hey, thanks for the email. But could you do it over here also? Like <laughs> that, that doesn't start the good relationship. So I agree with you. Appointment calendars are important. I think the big thing that we put on our tech coaches to coach websites is, you know, apps and web tools, right? Sure. Some people have a hyperdoc that they can put everything in. Some people have uh, reviews. Some people just make a, a Google site page that links out to many things. 
Some people do. I've seen all the different variations. Nick, what do you do? Yeah. So for apps, you know, I like integrating like Padlet or something like that into my sites. I find that to just be a fun thing. Uh, it's different. It's interactive. I like that to highlight classroom achievements. So I'm all about the, you know, the, you know, uh, spreading the fire idea. And if one teacher does it and highlights what they're doing and it was, it worked or it was effective, the next teacher follows it. So I like Padlet as that sticky board. So I have one on my site that I, I use or it's accessible through our LMS or the site. I have it in both places. So mm-hmm. uh, just a, you know, a fun spot for them to, to go to and utilize that, you know, and, and the tech tips and the crypt or the crib sheets and the, and the tip sheets, stuff like that, which are basically hyperdocs in essence, Google docs that are just embedded into the site. Um, what about you? If you have a go-to app, you know, I, I've been a big fan of s'more. Okay. You know, because yeah. with a s'more, and you know, s'more, by the way, again, is how we're doing our lesson plans and our crib sheets and stuff like that for our mastermind website. And if you are a part of the mastermind, you'll get all of that stuff built into your membership. Um, I like having a site done by, how do I put it? Like, so the site that I'm building right now says, I want my students to be able to as opposed to having a page with a thousand apps. Because if you give a teacher that's intimidated by technology or even somebody who's a level two certified, right? As as long as you're doing that and you give them a a page full of 15 apps, they're gonna click on a link, look at a homepage and go, I don't get it. But if you, but I have mine set up to say, I want my students to be, you know, I want them to be artists, recorders, uh, geographers, uh, whatever, whatever the verb is there, right? I want them to be doing this. Um, then a teacher can at least say, oh, I want to do something with audio. Here's the list of apps. I want my kids to be doing something with websites. Here's the list of apps. And at least it's a starting point. Now, yes, you're going to have an app in more than one category. I get it. But it, it's a start, Right, it's a way to get somebody interested because maybe they're, they're they're looking for lesson plan ideas and they just see the questions. I want my kids to be map makers. Okay, now what do you got? You got Google Maps, you got My Maps, you got Google Earth, you got Google Slides, you got and someone might go, wait, wait, slides? I can do mapping with slides. Now that's the introduction for the conversation. That's what gets you the, that phone call or that email or or anything like that. So definitely have something for web tools. And you know we had mentioned s'more. We've been doing all of our lesson plans here on, on Ask the Tech Coach using s'mores. So we have our all of our s'mores designed for our lessons. And I like doing this on s'mores because I can then send my teachers a single s'more. And just like I'd be sitting there, here's what you need. Here's the idea for a lesson. Here's some examples. Here's a template you can download. And it literally runs everything through. And I think that's an important piece, Jeff. I, you know, I think for anyone, even if you're a teacher and you're trying to get into this or just you're, you're a tech coach and you're looking for some ideas, I think that piece, having a lesson that teachers can take away, um, because that's the most important piece, right? They're looking for that, like, all right, how do I use this tool, but how can I apply it to the classroom? I do a similar thing at the bottom of a lot of different, um, you know, documents or whatnot. I have just a section and all it says is, so what if, and the idea is it's just going to be followed by quick little snippets that really are lessons or activities of how to use that tool. You know, so we're talking about Flipgrid. So what if, you know, you generated a digital scavenger hunt or we're talking about, you know, um, s'more, like you said, so what if students were designing a social media campaign and s'more was one of the elements. So I think that's a powerful piece. So we have our appointment calendar. We have apps and web tools. We have lesson plans. Yep. I know on mine, I always have a you know a calendar of our PD classes, but I also have the actual websites that I build my PD sites on. Nick, do you just go in with a slide deck? Do you put everything on a website? I know you're going to tell me you probably use the learning management system for this, right? <laughs> I you know and I and I do I do use my learning management system for everything. So I do have you know my learning modules and things like that for teachers to jump into. The last thing that we put on our website is tips, tricks, resources. Yeah. And and you know this could be anything from embedding our our tech tip Tuesdays or whatever you call it out mm-hmm. there to just having those those resources available. You know, today somebody came up and said, "Hey, I just got an interactive TV in my classroom. How do I use it?" And I went, "Ta-da! 
And I pulled out this entire Google site that I made on this. And they look at me like, you're crazy. You've done this for us. <laughs> I go, yeah, that's the gig. You're, oh. you're, you're ready before you're supposed to be ready. Right. So there's a lot of different things on here. We want to know what's on your tech coach website. You can of course go over to Twitter and find us at ask the tech coach or reach out to us and, and you'll let us know teachercast.net slash voicemail. We would love to hear from you. And if you leave us a voicemail, you know, maybe we'll play it on the show next week. We would love to get some feedback about our show and you know, Tell us what you think. Tell us what you're doing out there. Now, Nick, we know a little bit about why. We know a little bit about what. Now we're going to learn a little bit about where. Um, <clears throat> options for websites, right? We we talked a little bit earlier about WordPress. Um, I like WordPress. WordPress I like is, WordPress, yeah. WordPress is awesome. There's various ways of looking at WordPress, right? You could do WordPress.com, which you can get a free blog on WordPress.com and set it up. And that's pretty cool. Um, you could also go self-hosted. I know many schools have a self-hosted WordPress account that they create things. If that's your school, maybe you can offload a subdomain. You know, you could do tech coach at myschool.com. And so you could do a self-hosted way one of my favorite ways to work with teachers is edublogs. And, and, you know, just like WordPress.com, it's a free site. It's full WordPress. You can do, um, you know, students and teachers. You can do classrooms in there if you wanted to set it up with many, many, multiple people. There's a lot of different things that you can do in the world of WordPress. Uh, give it a try. The, the biggest thing about WordPress, I would say, Nick, is WordPress is a blog that happens to have a website component to it as opposed to other sites like Squarespace, Wix, Weebly that are websites that happen to have a blog attached to it. It really all depends on how you want to organize your content. Sure. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're looking at is the one probably many people are out there are using, which is Google Sites. Google Sites, yep. I love Google Sites. I probably build five or six new Google Sites a day with my teachers. It's simple, free, Right, connects right into your Google account. You can lock it down so it's in domain only. Right, like today I had the question, you know, if I put something on a Google site, can the world see it? Well, maybe, but you know, you could have an open Google site but lock down a Google Doc. That's right. that's a possibility, right? So you can always play with the controls over that stuff. Another way that I've seen a lot of my my MIE friends do it is they're using OneNote. And so this is a new one to me, Jeff. So you're going to have to explain OneNote a little bit. OneNote is wonderful. And, and there's a lot of links in our show notes over at Ask the Tech Coach episode 20 um, about OneNote. As you guys know, I'm a, I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator. I also am the host of the Microsoft Innovative Educator podcast. And we do a lot of stuff with OneNote. OneNote is essentially a... Oh, my goodness. They, they, they might hurt me for saying it this way, but it's a notebook, right? It, they, they call them class notebooks and stuff like that. But basically, you take a blank sheet of paper and you can put things anywhere on that paper you want, right? So it doesn't have to. It can be organized however you want. You can create a text box, throw it anywhere on there. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. But literally on one OneNote page, you can organize it by pages, by chapters, by tabs, by by multiple things. Um. If you were in a Microsoft Office 365 district, this might be a good solution for you. If you're in a Google School district, maybe Google Sites is good for you. It really depends on how you're teaching your teachers how to teach, right? And I think that's the deal. Obviously, I put all my stuff on Google Sites because I'm modeling that for my kids. My tech coach friends that are in O365 schools do everything in OneNote because they're trying to teach a teacher and model how to build and organize their digital self. Nick, you might have another way of creating things. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to tell me that the learning management system <laughs> is able to have all of the things that you need right in front of you. Absolutely. Uh, now, granted, I love Google Sites. I like it for its simplicity. I like the streamlined, you know, feed down the center and being able to, you know, move things and modify modify the page to to your liking. And WordPress, I use for a for a blog and tech tips. But absolutely, the learning management system. Again, I think it comes back to what you just said. Just 
feeling out your staff, what's a, what's the tool, what's the place that they spend a lot of time. For us, we spend a lot of time in the learning management system. So I utilize that as the site. I have access to tech tips and, and I'll be honest, I'm actually working on integrating and utilizing uh, the portfolio that's built into our learning management system to now actually become the new place where I'm going to hold our tech tips. So maybe, you know, eventually I may actually kind of not need my WordPress tech tip site really anymore. Um, and that's all going to be merged in as well. And again, the goal is really simple. It's just, I don't want my teachers clicking everywhere. I want to make it as easy as one stop shop. It's a hub. Everything you need is right there. So if you're out there listening to this, please do me a favor, raise your hand. If you've ever thought this, Oh my goodness. I spent five hours doing this and nobody has looked at it yet. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) Right. And, And that's, kind of the idea behind this right it's if we're gonna spend the time making it if we're gonna say we're building it to use it as a model if we're gonna pour our hearts into building this site to be useful for people clearly nick we want it to be useful to people so one of my tech tips for making websites is having a clear focus to the content do i want this to be a apps resources site that happens to have lessons or do i want to make this a lesson site where people know to come here to learn awesome stuff and then oh by the way we're using flipgrid or oh by the way we're using padlet or is this my pd portal that while i'm teaching i also have a how-to guide on how to use google sites or slides or docs or whatever you have there. But I I would say the most important thing for anybody, and this is tech coach site, this is personal branding site, this is anything that you're doing, right? Have a clear focus to their content. And that's, the, you know, that's a good one. I think for me, Jeff, um, just having the clean navigation, the idea that everyone can just kind of search your site. They know where things are. They don't have to spend too much time searching for stuff. They find what they want, you know, at that minute. Think about how many teachers just, hey, I'm on a prep or I'm on my lunch. I want to see how to do something. I got five minutes I can spend. I just want to learn this trick. Boom, they get it and then they move on. And that's important. And the only way that you know that it's kind of by failing. Right. Sure. Like I, I, I can't tell you how many different variations of tech coach sites I've built in the last four years here. But you always get into that. I want to build this. And I've talked to many tech coaches since we started up the podcast here over the summertime that said, I'm a new tech coach. I want to build a rocket ship. And then we're going to get into September. And I'm going, dude, that might be awesome. But you're spending a lot of time building something that you don't have proof of. You might spend a lot of time building something and get to school and your teachers are like, I don't want to learn that way. I want this. And now what you've done with your time, you've got all this great stuff. You're ready to go. But again, you built it the way you wanted it to be built, not the way your students or your teachers want to be built. So keeping that navigation, you know, find a couple of good friends. Check it out. You know, um, you know, you know, we've said it in the past. Nick and I are constantly bouncing things back and forth. We're in two different districts. And what do you think? Does this work? How does you know, what are we doing things? Always have that somebody out there, even on the teaching staff, that you can kind of feel the vibe of here because not only do you need to have that clear focus not only do you need to have that clean navigation but it's got to be able to search for things right like you got to be able to go there and find what you don't know you don't know Right. And use that as an opportunity. Right. So, I mean, those are those teachable moment things. And and you as the, you know, the person putting it together, have a feel for this is built off the relationships. Right. Get to know your teachers, find the things they need um, and use that as the places that uh, of, of the content that you want to fill your site with. So, Nick, there's a lot of stuff that we just covered here. You know, we, we talked about why creating a website, what goes in a website, how to build the platform. And, and certainly, I love the, the tips here of making sure that everybody is focused on that one thing. You know, really, the only thing that we didn't talk about yet is promoting the website. Like, how do you how do you right. promote the website? Nick, how do you promote where all of your stuff is? Do you just say, go to my staff portal? Or do you say, hey, this page has this, this page has that? So, uh, you know, when I post tech tips, one of the things is I always like to shoot that out in an email. Uh, I don't send too many emails. When I do, I try to just do like a tech tip. But one of my tricks is I don't tell what the tech tip is in my email. I say new tech tip of the week, whatever it is. And then I'll say, you know what, this tech tip covers this idea and you could see it now here and all it is is the link that then brings them right to the you know the tech tip site then it's like oh they click on it it brings them there right to that new tip 
And now that they're there, maybe I've caught them. Maybe like, well, you know what? I've got a few minutes to kill, so let me start to poke around and see what other things he's got on here. So that's just a little trick that I've used, and, and it works really well. I I completely echo what you what you just said there. You know, make sure that you have the stuff available. Hopefully, they poke and find things. If that means organizing a sidebar or a footer, or you know, adding a few extra links. I know Google Sites doesn't do related content the same way WordPress does, but that doesn't mean that you can't find a way to build things into your navigation system. You know what, guys? I think the thing that we've learned over the last couple of years here as being tech coaches is it's never easy. And there's certainly many ways that you can go north and south with it, but it's a process, right? Your, your a website is never done. TeacherCast is never going to be finished, right? This podcast is never, sorry, Nick, it's never going to be finished. Like you're always going to be trying to look at it and improve upon it. And so um, any last words of advice before we, uh, before we move on from this tech coach website topic? No, I, you know, I think it's good that we kind of broke this down because we've talked about, you know, sites in the past before, but we never kind of broke it down. And I think just one of the big takeaways for me is, is harping on the idea of, of the organic site and, and building it based off of what your specific needs are. We have that tendency to want to run with the site design and get all creative and, and spice it up and add a lot of things. But, but again, what, what, what's the direct initiative and needs of, of your teachers and focus on those things. Guys, we want to know what you guys are out there doing. You can always find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Leave us a voice message over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. And please keep all these questions coming in. We love hearing from you. We had emails this week, Nick, from Denmark, from Poland, from Brazil, from New Jersey. We had a lot of stuff out in Texas. Thank you guys for reaching out to us over here at Ask the Tech Coach. This is the podcast to help you guys become better tech coaches and create amazing professional development for your students. Nick, what do we have going on next week? Episode 21. So in the next episode, we are going to look at best training methods uh, to use as tech coaches. So, you know, should we design online learning modules? Is face-to-face -face better? Um, whole group versus one-to-one -one training, department versus whole building, uh, tech tips versus weekly newsletter. So I and think the, that's an awesome one. We do all of that stuff. And this really is the continuation of this lesson. Sure. Right? Which is really the continuation of episode 19's lessons now that you have your website what are you going to do with it right we've talked about it a lot on this show it is a training portal no matter what you have on it it is what we're going to use as the backbone for our professional training sessions and next week we're really going to be diving into the best ways we want to know from you guys, right? Again, are you guys more face-to-face? -face? Are you building online learning? Do you use badging? How are you doing that? That's what we're going to be talking about next week. If you have any questions that you'd like us to bring up or have on our show, please let us know over on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Nick, we've got a lot of great things as, as we go through here as October is just hitting. Of course, we've got the Mastermind, which people can still sign up for over at teachercast.net slash Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind. we got a lot of great topics coming up in November and, and, and December and as we go through the through the rest of the year, it's been a good, good month of September. I know I've had a good start to my school year. Nick, did you have a good start to your school year? I did. You know, one of my goals this year was just to spend more time bouncing into classrooms, you know, just randomly just meeting teachers, like building relationships, like we said uh, last at the on the last episode and just just popping in more often. And I've had a fun time doing it. Me too. I, I've made it a point to, to get in touch with those teachers who I might not have had those personal relationships over the last couple of years. And I'm trying to bring in at least two or three new friends every single week as we go. And I got to tell you, this podcast, just being a part of it with you, has certainly helped me out. I know I've gotten that same feedback from other teachers and tech coaches around the country. So thank you guys out there for listening to the show. And as we always say, thank you for making Ask the Tech Coach and the Teacher Cast Network part of your professional development. Element. Nick, where do we find out more information about the stuff you're doing? So you can find me on Twitter uh, at an Admiral edu or on my blog, uh, edtechforay.wordpress.com. And of course, you can find out all the information here over at askthetechcoach.com. This is episode 20. We have all of our archived blogs and podcasts and online courses and everything over there on askthetechcoach.com. And check out some of the other stuff happening over on TeacherCast. We've got a lot of great things on how to make a podcast 
We'll be bringing that up in an in a upcoming episode. How to make a great website. we got a lot of stuff there. And, of course, this week on our newsletter, we really touted the work of our friend Dr. Sam Patterson, all the stuff he's doing in the field of STEM education, makerspaces. Check out his website, mypaperlessclassroom.com. And, of course, again, we want to say thank you guys for out there for making TeacherCast the home for your professional development. And until next time, my name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Averill. Reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students.